Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Misty Polaro. Thanks for taking a little time out of your evening to hop online and join me for a workshop on a virtual binder. Um, I work with Family Network on Disabilities. Is anybody on with me this evening who has not heard of our organization? Because um, I'll quick do a little overview if, if you don't know who Family Network on Disability is. You can either stick your hand up or use the emoji on the bottom, hand signal, whatever you like. Did you see, Dion? She, you're oh, yeah. on this side of me, Dion. She raised her hand. Oh, Family Network on Disabilities. Actually, I'm going to share my screen because I have a little visual. I'm not a big on presentations, uh, workshops. I like to be natural, but also I don't know what type of a, oh, look at this. All my screens are not going to show. Here we go. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So Family Network on Disabilities is a statewide nonprofit. We are located in Clearwater. We, this is our 36th year actually. Um, and we're a nonprofit 501c3. We started down in Dunedin Hospital through NICU. My executive director and his wife um, had our now director of programs, Joe LaBelle. <laughs> back then and um, in NICU and, and there was no support. So they started a support group in their living room. And from there, um, we've been lucky enough to acquire federal grants through the Department of Education. So we have three programs that are federally funded and they cover um, different parts of Florida, the North, Central and South part of Florida. And is this gonna click for me? Yeah, here we go. I did the welcome. We don't need to know about that. Um, and we have uh, Family Driven, nonprofit. So we are not attorneys, we are not doctors, we're not mental health professionals. What we all are are parents. Every one of us in the organization is a parent. I've been uh, navigating special education now for 25 years privately for my own family. I was just sharing if I don't know who heard, but my youngest is graduating this year. 504 plan for ADHD. Um, but I also have my Matthew, who I talk about a lot, and he is on the spectrum. He's 19, uh, kind of have ABC soup in my house. <laughs> but I've been professionally navigating IEPs and 504s now for 11 years with Family Network on Disabilities. So these three programs cover the entire state. Um, we have the Poppin program that covers North Florida. We have the Penn Project that's South, and then me network. We cover from birth up to 26 years of age, and we don't turn anybody away after 26. Our resources are over 36 years. I mean, we, we, we give anybody the support that they need. Um, so we're free, which is another awesome. <laughs> we're statewide, we're multiple languages, um, and we are funded. I don't know if, if families on here have ever heard of early steps or fiddlers in the school system. Okay, so we're funded like that, but with Part D dollars, which means we're funded under IDEA, which is the Individual with Disability Education Act. And there's Part D dollars, and that's just for us, us parents, to train us, to educate us, to empower us to know what is available for our kids. But then the little caveat there is we're also there for the professionals that serve our kids. So we are what's known as a state of Florida Department of Education discretionary project. There's over a hundred of them. Um, and if you have a child that has a 504 or an IEP, or you have a family that knows and you need some resources, we might be able to help you navigate them inside the school system. But also, let me take this off of, I, I prefer just talking, I really do. <laughs> but also connect you with those supports outside because they look different for all of us. And if we don't know what options or what are available, then how do we make those right choices? Because what's good for me is not the right for you for Jessica. It's not for you, Sharon. It's not for you, Deanna. It, it's for, you know, so having that service and being there to provide is what we do. So there's no referrals. What you do is you either give us a call, Facebook us, email us, text me, whatever that looks like. And um, I help you navigate and educate you in the, same, in the same time. We don't go to meetings with you. 
but we're going to support you to where you, you will be connected with those other supports in your community that you can build your own village. And then from there, then you have those moms or those dads or those friends that you're going to turn to. And I got an IEP meeting. What do I do? <laughs> so is there anybody that's on with us this evening that has not, I'm thinking a virtual IEP binder. We must all have an IEP or a 504, but I've learned never assume. So is there anybody on here that does not, is not involved in special education? Okay. So a virtual binder, um, does anybody have an IEP or a 504 binder at home, like a hardcover binder? Anybody use one of them? Okay, so we could either use, I, I kind of old school, I do like paper still. Um, and my one son is like that, my youngest son, but my older son, he is all virtual. So he really helped got me going into the virtual binder, <clears throat> excuse me while he was doing his self-led IEPs in high school. So he's like, mom, I, I don't want all these papers. I'm like, well, Matthew, this is what helps me. So I'm gonna start right from scratch. I'm gonna go right to Google and we're gonna start right from the beginning. I thought it would be very nice to go step-by-step step, and it's not a lot of steps and it really isn't. So I'm sure there's a lot of other things that we could be chatting about. Cause I think we have what, an hour and a half or an hour. How long do we have Jess? An hour. An hour. Still probably even too long for an IEP virtual, but hey, I can chat all night, so no worries. <laughs> uh, and before we get going, do we have any questions? And again, you can just raise your hand up. You can use your emojis. Um, and I, I encourage questions while we go along. Let, let you know, we're, 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 we're parents, you know. Um, don't wait to the end. If, if you're not sure, we can go over it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And what this is gonna do for us, these virtual binders, let's shut all these other links down so we're not gonna. What a virtual binder is gonna help us do is stay organized virtually. And what's great about Google Drive is it's free. Um, and being that we live in a state that, you know, we have um, hurricane season. So sometimes, you know, things happen and God forbid if we need to evacuate, uh, these documents are accessible anywhere, anywhere that we go. So I also encourage my families that I work with to upload any important documents that you might need if you need to evacuate, because we also do evacuation and disaster preparedness for our family workshops. So um, even, even though, you know, you always need a hard copy, sometimes if they know you're in a disaster, they will take that copy, photocopy of that birth certificate that you have, because unfortunately you don't have it any longer. So um, really you can utilize Google Drive in a, for a lot of different things. Has anybody not used Google yet at all, as far as Gmail or anything like that? Okay, so you have a Gmail? Perfect, if you have a Gmail, then you have all of this already at your fingertips. Now, let me ask you, do, do we want to do a desktop version? Um, I mean, it mimics the, the, the cell phone. So I'm just gonna share my desktop, but it does mimic on your cell phone. When you use the app, you should see very similar to what I'm showing you up on the desktop right now. So let's go ahead and share a screen, Google. All right, I'm gonna sign out of mine. Let me move you guys over here. And we're going to, so if the, nobody has an account, you're going to go to Google and you can go to, um, I would start off with Gmail, get a Gmail account, because once you get a Gmail account, um, you will have everything on a little waffle whenever you log in your Gmail. On the top left-hand corner, you should have a little waffle or the right-hand corner, but we're going to use another account. And we're going to create account. Let's see for for myself. And we're going to do Pinellas PTA. <laughs> okay, so then um, first name, last name. It's going to ask for a username. So let's do Pinellas PTA. And um, at gmail.com password, we're going to do PTA 
one, two, three, four explanation point. BTA, one, two, three, four explanation point. We need a phone number. All right. I have so many Google accounts connected to this phone number. Oh, my birthday. Sorry. They want to make sure that you're an adult, which is good. <laughs> More than an adult. <laughs> All right. So next. So you're going to walk through the process. And again, they're going to send you a verification code because um, they want to confirm who you are, which is good because you'll also be able to do this when you share files, because what's great is you can share real time documents inside Google Drive. And so say if you're working with a teacher or a professional with, with your child and you want to share notes um, and you share the Google Drive folder, you can see in real time if these people, in fact, went into that folder. Um, the time that they went in, did they do anything in that folder? Did they just open it up or did they actually get in and look around and open things up? Um, so it's really good for our backup because if you're in special education, you should, um, if anything, if you don't walk away from anything else today, then always get paper backup from any conversation that you have. Um, you always want to have a paper trail. So this is where your Google Drive on your cell phone is going to help because photos, you take a photo of something, you do... You, I'm, I'm getting ahead of the game. Let's put the the the, the code in. <laughs> so it's G. So they sent me the code. Two nine two six zero. Oops. Yeah, Mr. Shaver glasses on. <laughs> yes, I'm in. All right. I'm going to agree to everything. So here we go. And we're going to shut this down. So when you go into your account, you're going to go ahead. You're going to go ahead and sign in. You had an extra A in it. Thank you. So the one you just created was P-I-N-E-A-L-L-A-S. I'm sorry, did I? So so if you put an A there, then it'll work. There you go. I did that. <laughs> yeah. I, if I haven't disclosed to the group, I myself am ADHD combined. <laughs> I also have anxiety. So right then my anxiety, I'm like, you did it wrong. <laughs> no, it's great. Because then if you do one, it just gives you more options now. <laughs> Got you, Misty. <sighs> oh. go and we're in all right we're going to cancel that so when you go into your desktop if you're not already logged into your gmail you can go right to your google main page and here is your waffle you'll see a little waffle in the right hand corner can, should i expand it can you see it all give me a thumbs up okay so you're going to click that waffle and in that waffle is going to be all different apps that are already uploaded in there for you Drive is already there. You have your Gmail, you have Google Meet, um, your calendar, which I encourage because you can link it. Start if you don't use it already, if you're going to go ahead and start a virtual binder through Gmail, I encourage you to go ahead and start utilizing that calendar as well because you these are all linkable. Um, so again, if you put something in as a date as um, for a meeting in your in your um, Google Drive, it'll automatically link to your your calendar for you. So you don't have to go back and forth, back and forth. And for somebody like me, that helps me because I get confused. Too many tabs, too many buttons. I want it short and sweet, or I'm just going to shut it off and I can't be bothered with it. I'm going to be honest. I appreciate Google because it's simple. Once you get in and get started, it's very easy. Um, and again, if anybody wants a one-on-one, -on -one, after I'm back from vacation next week, I'll be more than happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one if somebody needs to sit down and go over with this because it's an hour. You might not soak it all in. So we're gonna go ahead and go to your waffle in the right corner and we're gonna go ahead and hit that drive button. All right. So I already have an amazing website up 
to show you a comparison. So this is, um, we're gonna mimic a hard binder into virtual world, okay? So if you've never seen a binder, I brought a great website up. It's called understood.org and you're gonna get all of these resources, okay? Um, I actually have a um, evaluation I'm gonna give you and the PTA has a special landing page on our website because we work with the state ESE PTA. So you have your own login with beyond these resources, beyond what you can even imagine. <laughs> So how to organize your child's IEP binder. So I would utilize, and what's great about here, and Dion, I saw you shaking your head, you must use this website. I live on this website because they give us vi visuals, videos, um, PDFs, really it's, it's diversified learning. So whatever type of a learning style you have, they're gonna have it here. And it also translates to multiple languages. In here, you're going to go through, and I believe they will have. Here you go. So they're going to you're going to walk through on, on here as as a hard time binder. It's going to tell you you want a three ring binder, six tab section dividers, a three hole punch. Well, all we're going to need virtual world is start off with six tabs. We're going to start off with six tabs. So you're in your Google Drive, okay? Right here on the left hand side, it says new. You tap on that new folder and that pops up. So we're gonna do folder one and create. And then we're gonna go folder two and, and through those six folders. And six is just starting off. You might not need as many or you might need to add more depending on, but I encourage starting off at your basic is following these areas that they have here, communication, and again, what's great about communication is if you, if you use Microsoft Outlook at all um, or Google, they, you, there's a spot that you can upload right into the drive, either or, whether it is in your Microsoft Outlook or in your Google Gmail. You can upload a, a copy instead of um, like printing it, you're gonna hit upload and I'll, I'll walk you through that again. I'll show you that one too. <laughs> So you're gonna do tab one is gonna be communication. Tab two is gonna be your evaluations. And I do, personally, I do school evals and I do private evals. I do two separates. And keep just the previous year. We don't need to keep five, six, seven, eight years worth. Just keep the previous year. And again, if you have a Google Drive, start, uploading these and then you can have every IEP at fingertips just make folders separate folders year grade one grade two grade three and just every year copy because I'll show you how you could do that you could just copy things um, then tab three is going to be your IEP or your 504 Tab four is gonna be your uh, report cards and your progress notes if you're on an IEP you get your quarterly um, with your report card typically, and I know it really doesn't say a lot. Um, <laughs> I guess you know what I'm talking about, Sharon. So we can always ask at our IEP meetings for it to be expanded a little bit more if that's something that you're not seeing is getting enough communication to you, um, is meeting their goals. Sometimes we want a little bit more that is meeting their goals. So that's where you're gonna put all well, in tab four, you're gonna put those progress notes and those report cards. And then tab five is gonna be those sample works. And again, kids bring them home, take photos. While they're taking homework, doing homework, take a video because you can upload videos right from your photo or your gallery in your phone. You can send it right to Google Drive, which is amazing. Um, and then tab six, those behaviors. Now we don't need a uh, supply pouch because it's all at your fingertips, which is amazing. So once you start, you know, you're going to get with those six to start off with as your base basic. And as you know, your own self, your organization habits, um, or as I, my lack of, you might need more and more. <laughs> but what's great is you can also color code. So with me, those visuals. So you can go ahead, you can change a color. You can make it red. You can go ahead and you can um, get a link. So what 
I'm going to send to Jessica. Um, Jessica, I'm going to share some information with you before you and I meet to chat about next month's PTA meeting. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just sharing that as a PTA, just to have the conversation so I can show you. So say if I had my IAP in here, I'm going to go ahead and you could do it either or, but I want it to be here. I'm going to put some information. These are all the things I'm going to send to you. See, I'm going to upload. Let me upload so I can show you. I'm going to go back. Before I sh share to Jessica, let me put all the documents in here now, and then I'm going to share the link to Jessica. So I'm going to go ahead in my folder one, and I'm going to click that open. And again, I'm going to go up to that new tab on the left-hand corner, file upload. So I can either do a file upload or a folder, or I can do, do Google document, which is really great because that's like a Microsoft Word, but you have speak to text in here. So when you're writing to your, your teacher, uh, this is what I use a lot. <laughs> so when you're writing and communicating, do it in a Google document, because then you can do it right from your phone or right from your desktop, and you could do speak to text. Um, then you got your Google Slides, your Google Forms, which is great to use for communication for our little, say, behavior, um, daily behavior sheets. You could share with the teacher, have it in Google Drive. So instead of the teacher having to remember to do this paper every day or having to remember to get into that, that um, agenda book that they send home every day, you can have a real life. And then you can also have that back up to see if, in fact, are they going in? Um, when was the last time were they in? So we're going to do a file upload because we want to upload a couple of things that I just parent communication log, contact at my child's school, IEP goal tracker, IEP binder checklist. So I'm going to upload all of them. They'll upload. If you have a Microsoft Word document, you can upload that in here and it automatically transfer that to a Google's uh, sheet for you. If you have a Microsoft Excel sheet, you can upload that in here and it'll automatically transition that to a Google, um, what's it called? I apologize, I forget what it's called because I don't use it, sheets. <laughs> and my phone is going off because I keep saying the G word. <laughs> Okay, so for instance, okay, so Jess, I just put all the files in here that I wanted to share with you uh, to prepare for our meeting, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the top, everybody, okay, because I wanna share this link. So you wanna share it with whoever that you're gonna send this link to, or you can share it and put restrictions on, and that's what I'm gonna show you now. So you're gonna hit this get link. All right, right now it's restricted. Okay, so here's a link. You can copy that link and grab that link and send it to somebody if you wanna do that. But this is what you wanna check before you do that because again, it could be restricted for your eyes only. So those specific documents that you don't wanna share, you put restrictions on, but you can do any one with a link. So I would make sure that you have, whether it's restricted, well, you wouldn't be sending the link if you were sending it restricted, unless you were sending it to yourself, maybe as a backup for some reason, but um, anyone with a link, and then you can go ahead and copy that link. And then if you're in your cell phone, you copy it, gives you a little copy button. Um, you could paste it into your texting or into your email, or you could go right into an email and paste it and send out that link. Any questions yet? Nope. All right. So we're going to go ahead and go back to over here. So what's great is, oh, actually, you know what? Let me show you that what I was telling you about, about the activity and everything, okay? So on the right-hand panel of your Google Drive, um, you have little buttons here. Stop activating. Um, you have little tasks, which is awesome. So if you got to sign yourself tasks, I know myself, I need to do that a lot of times, especially if I'm working on something that's time restricted. And I know I have to do my parent input form and I got to send it out there and I'll forget to get it done. Um, I do my parent input form in a Google document. I put a task on to remind myself and then I speak to text it so I don't have to type it. <laughs> done. Um, you have Keep, this is Google Keep, where you can go ahead and keep, um, here we go. 
your passwords and notes and things like that. So you could take a note while you're typing. Um, but I don't use them too much. I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I use the left panel mostly and this little right here, the little eye in a circle. This is what you're gonna be able to see about activity. So you can see, this is where you'll be able to see that everything that the timestamp, what was done inside that drive and from anyone, we just created this drive. So um, there's not much in there, but I like that because again, that's accountability. And that also um, is that backup sometimes that maybe we forget to get, we have it in there. All right, let me move this over here. And let me go back to my drive. So you could also go ahead and when, once you start building up, a lot of times um, for myself, just as unorganized, I, I, my executive functioning, I st struggle. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. So, I mean, my Google Drive can get very messy looking, just like my desk can get messy looking sometimes. <laughs> it does. Because I'm so busy uploading things that sometimes I forget to go in and organize these things. So every once in a while, I'll go in and I'll organize. I'm going to go ahead and just make a couple of different folders really quick. And I'm going to redo it again so I can show you, just so I can show you some of the nice little tricks that we can do. So again, you're going to hit new folder. We're going to do folder two. Okay, so new folder. So we're going to left to it's always left click on the folder. So I want to change this color. And I'm going to make this one a green. We're going to left click. And again, you can remove it. Change color. I'm going to make that one a red. All right. So now I decided that folder one is the main one that I'm working in the most right now. Okay. So I want to right click because I'm going to star this. I want to make this to where I can find it easily. So on my cell phone for Google Drive, I access it a lot. And the first page that comes up is my starred. So it's because of the use that I use it so much, it just automatically stars it itself after using it so often. Um, but I wanna make sure, cause this is a new drive. So folder one is the one that I'm focusing on right now. I don't wanna get overwhelmed with everything else right now. So I'm gonna go up to folder one again, I'm gonna left click on that and I'm gonna add to my starred, um, my starred uh, folder. On the left side, you'll see starred. So for now, I'm only focusing on that one folder. I'm not getting um, sidetracked and looking at these other colors saying, okay, what do I gotta do now? I know I have to do other things, but I have to focus on this one. This one needs to be first. So a few of these things that you could put in these, these files, and these are things that I'm gonna give to you as well, printables. I love understood.org again. I get all of these off of there. Um, contact list. Again, this is varies for different grades and they have elementary, middle and high school on their website, which you will get on your landing page that that link. Um, so again, this is everything from class placement, evaluations for special education, your food, if there's if one of our kiddos have sensory food allergies, that's gonna be a very important information. It's probably gonna be your nurse's number. That's gonna be there. Um, and again, these are all, you know, these, what I suggest doing is making your own, looking at these as a template and from there, working from there, we have the Google Sheets in there. You can just, if nobody has experience, reach out for me again, we can sit down and chat, no worries. <laughs> and these will um, vary from different grades. I also like to put in here, because, what um, you know, you want to be able to just grab it sometimes. So parent school communication log. So again, keeping, you know, who initiated that phone conversation? Maybe, maybe you were, maybe, um, maybe Sharon was at the pickup line and she was waiting to pick up her son and Miss Taylor came up to her at the window and stated that, you know, that there was a problem in class and um, he didn't get, um, um, 
unfortunately, the little one didn't get their star at the end of the day, unfortunately. And he was really upset and did not take that well at all. So, you know, good luck tonight on that one, Ma. Bye-bye. You know? <laughs> so you're going to go home really quick. <laughs> All right. And you're going to just document that for yourself. Okay. Something like that. You don't need to do a follow-up email. Thank you for chatting with me unless there is a behavior issue and then, or problem and you're collecting data. Well, then of course, go ahead and follow up with a written email. But if this is just for your own sake, so you can maybe keep an eye on things, um, observe things, you know, make sure things are going okay. Then this is something that you can utilize or just again, use it as a template. Misty, did you see the question in the box? In no, the I didn't. No, no, no. Please. Yeah, thank you for letting me know. Is there a reason for naming folder versus communications? No, anything at all. You can, this is for you. You put anything you want in here. A high schooler, um, he's 19. He's still in public education. So now we have extended transition program and vocational rehabilitation <laughs> and then evaluations so it's a little bit different so again this is what's so great about it because you can make it anything and personalize it um i also like your iep binder checklist again this could be used paper or or virtual um going through here you know your contact list your communication log again understood.org <laughs> So they have a take note. Has anybody seen that part of their website? Take note. Okay, I'll have to review that with you. Um, they uh, partnered with the American Academy of Pediatrics when COVID hit, and they designed a website called Take Note. And what that does is it helps us parents, um, if we see our little ones, or even not even a little one, we just see our kids struggling. It walks us through the noticing, talking, collecting that data, and then who do we go to to talk to? So it's really a great little nugget, especially um, this past year and a half, some of our kiddos that might not have been struggling learners prior to COVID might be struggling now. Um, and we don't know how to help them. So, um, but again, these are this goes with that whole hard copy or virtual, whatever you choose, you can have both. We have both going on. I still prefer paper and pen. Um, but for my middle son, like I said, he likes virtual. And these again will be sent to you. Um, what else do we have? Here we go. So our organization makes lots of visuals and we're gonna go to my website in a mo moment. This is a four step on how to create a virtual binder. So this, I will actually, I can upload right into the chat area and Jessica, um, I will send this to you so you can have it. Oh, I see a question. So you can have a hard copy of it as well. Yes, definitely. We need this, to build this. This is my comment. No, I appreciate that because you know what? It, it, it really is. Um, you know, I was in an IEP. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. I was in a um, facilitated IEP training all week. And these people are national. And, you know, some of the things that they came to the table saying that they hear that they're told that, you know, take an advocate right from the right from the start. We don't want to take an advocate right from the start, personally, at least, you know, I, I, you want to build those bonds, you want to build those relationships, you want to build that support at the at where it is at the school. Um, and you know, PTA, who's better, who's better to help provide that. Um, you know, you guys do some amazing things. So your therapist, your, your, they're called related services. They might not all be in your school. That's you. I know. <laughs> I, that's a whole other workshop that we could be doing. <laughs> but from a related service perspective, especially if you've never met a family and you're automatically hearing they're bringing advocates or bringing this, bring, especially if you don't have that relationship, it does put the school on, um, on the defensive, whether very much, it's very adversarial, very, yes. And it's not meant to be. And like, I 100% understand the advocate. I, Hey, oh, and, and that's what I'm here for. Want. But it's when you build that relationship with your parents, I think probably one of the best things that came out of COVID is, um, I have a 
pretty good relationship with all of my kiddos' parents and like things that they're doing in therapy. Like I'll take pictures and send it to them. I'm like, oh my gosh, look what they did today. You know, just because it's staying connected. So it forced you to kind of do that um, yeah. because before it was like, well, we're at school and what's happening. And basically you saw it at the IEP or progress reports. And that was about it. Um, but it's definitely like having that good relationship between the parents and the therapist because we do see a lot. You know, uh, without a doubt. And, and that's where I think that unfortunately, um, we laugh every, Sharon. I'm sorry. I told Sharon, I said, don't be laughing. She knows. No. <laughs> now, are, are, is everybody who's joining us, are they part of the PT or are you just, are you parents at the school? A couple of them are part of the PTA and their parents at the school. Beautiful. Um, so And work in our ESE. County, our county has an ESE advisory committee. Okay. I'm parent chair of that committee. We also have our amazing... Um, Coral, who is from our Deaf and Hard of Hearing Community, ESE, and she is our district chair. Um, unfortunately, we have made a decision that we're going to be dissolving the board. And what we're going to be doing is turning it into an advisory steering committee. And what we're going to be doing, something that Missy's been trying to do um, since I started working with PTA seven years ago, is that we're going to be re reaching out to our district PTA and, and working together about having supports right at the school for our parents. Um, not only for ESE, we're seeing that resources around the board, you know, having that PTA there kind of a little hub. Um, I share my story all the time. I transitioned here 11 years ago through domestic violence relocation. And if it wasn't for my county, P my school PTA, who provided my boys their Christmas and the train tickets to move down here and the birthday party for my son. I mean, they were amazing. And I've been a part of PTA since 1997 <laughs> as a parent. So um, I love you guys. Um, let's get back to the workshop though. Cause I want to, I want to share a couple little things. I have, we don't have much time and I can go all night with resources. I really, and really Missy, you and I can just sidetrack all day long. Cause I'm straight up ADHD too. So it's all okay. <laughs> so we this is our website. And again, our website translates to multiple languages. Um, but when you're preparing for those meetings and for the Google drive, I suggest, you know, while you're on your phone, sitting at the hour pickup line, hour and a half pickup line, Jump on our website because under the resource tab, we have special downloadable resources for special education. We also have for LGBTQ and we also have for medical needs because we're statewide federally funded for zero to 26 with medical and mental health as well. So we're kind of a one-stop get it all organization. So if you go to our special download because we're talking about a virtual IEP binder tonight, we take the law and we take resources and we break it down into categories. And then we give you visuals. Five-step law that basically is what we're following and we break it down into little nuggets. Um, so they're easier to digest because we don't need it all sometimes. Sometimes we're walking in for one reason and we need that information. Okay, transportation. Uh, my son's got a 504. Can I get transportation as a related service? Ding, ding, ding. Does anybody know that answer? Raise your hand if anybody knows. So related services, transportation, occupational therapy, speech therapy provided through an IEP. But can a student with a 504 receive those services? Yes, they can. Patient, yeah. They say, I know yes, they, can. they can. It's like, but I was trying to remember if I've seen, if the kids I've worked with on 504s have gotten transportation on there. But from mom to mom, the struggle is if we're in a charter school. That's where our struggle is. Like right mm -hmm. now, my son's in credit recovery and he has a 504 transportation, but they cannot provide because they don't have a contract with the school. So there's other options though, thankfully. You know, there's, Pinellas County Transportation bus, they give them a card, whatever that looks like. So they do some great things. But we take everything as I was sharing and we break it all down. So for today, let's go into, let's pick a topic. Understanding behavioral supports, okay? 
because you don't have to have a kid with an IEP with a 504 that might have some behavior uh, behavior challenges, honestly, especially now with the changes and a lot going on. So again, um, these visuals could be used learning card, they basically are, to teach you advocacy skills. And it breaks down. Okay, so for instance, let's stop. Uh, come on. There we go. So for instance, a pro supplementary aids and services could be included as behavior supports if needed. So um, say if you have a struggling child and you know you're gonna be going and discussing behaviors in the classroom or behaviors in the lunchroom or whatever that looks like, you might wanna go through this file with behavior related um, images because you can always save the image and upload it into your Google file. So for instance, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save my image, just like you would save it on your desktop at home or save it on your phone, however, however way you would save it. I'm gonna to go to my Google where we were. I'm going to go into my drive because what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put my photos into folder two. So I'm going to open folder two. I'm going to head and do on the left corner, new, file upload. I, if you hear that, I apologize. My son is stemming in his room. I can hear him yelling. He's a vocal. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and Upload. And there you go, then the image is in there. So then again, if you wanted to say, for instance, you know what, Sharon, I know that you and I were talking the other day and you said you had a meeting come up and I, I have this really great photo that, you know, I found on, on a website, I'm going to send it to you. Okay. I'm going to send you a link to my Google drive. And anytime I find some photos, I'm going to put them in there and then you can access them and you can share them. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go, you could either go up to the folder here at the top and get link gives you so many places, or you can go right here and get link, whichever you want to do, but I'm going to go right up to the top. We're going to go ahead and get link. And again, we want to make sure that piece down here is not that it's off restricted because I want you to be able to or you're going to be texting me, give me access. Okay, and back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> We're just going to go ahead and hit copy link. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste it into either an email or a Gmail or into a calendar link because maybe I'm going to send it to you for a meeting that you and I are going to get it prepared for. We're going to do a virtual meeting and prepare for your IEP meeting coming up. So I'm going to shove it in there so you have everything there, whatever that may be that you want to share that, that link with. Any questions yet? Do we have any in the chat area? So let's take you to um, that take note really quick so you can see that because again, you might be preparing for a meeting and you're not sure if your child's struggling or not. Um, so let me get to share screen. So this is that understood.org. So as I was sharing earlier, they partnered with the American Academy of Pediatrics. I suggest joining their um, listserv, their email, because they just sent me a $10 Amazon card and I didn't know if it was real or not, but it was real. I was able to spend it on my Kristen's gifts on, on Facebook. <laughs> my, 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 I'm, I'm bad with that. I, I get a gift every day. I have to open something, it's, it, even if it's a 50 cent thing. <laughs> it feels good during COVID. <laughs> So are you wondering if your child is struggling? And this is where it's going to take, and it's N-O-T-E. So it's gonna walk you through. And what's that? Begin your journey step-by-step. Step. So you're gonna notice. Notice there's things going on out of the ordinary. And any age, really. You're gonna observe, you keep track of those patterns. And that's what understood.org is great for as well because you can find, um, Pattern trackers, you can just, they have a little search bar, little search bar right in the, on their website. Um, then you're going to talk. So talk with other people. So talk to the teacher, see if you're, they're seeing it in class. If you're, you know, are you, um, are you 
uh, speech, Jessica? Physical therapy. PT? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So say, 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 you know, um, maybe you have PT and my son's getting taken PT outside and I'm noticing that he's starting to have some new challenges, um, something new that he's never done before. So I'm going to reach out to you and see if maybe you're seeing anything when you're meeting with him. You're going to engage, engage with your child. Okay. It's never too young to talk to our children. Um, ask those questions. And if, if you're not sure how to ask those questions, reach out for me. I have some great conversation starters, some great websites that I can share with you. Um, right on our website too, we have social stories. A lot of times, maybe it's not easy talking to our kids or we're not sure. So walking through in a different route, but engage with them, talk to them, see if they notice if they're struggling, if that age is age appropriate, of course. And then from there, um, Oh, look at this. They even have for educators, Jess. So on the bottom, you have a section for, for educators. So then from there, you're going to collect that data inside your drive. You're going to take those videos when they have the meltdown because he does not want to do math homework. Every night, math homework is like pulling teeth. Um, I wind up doing it before he goes to school in the morning just to get it done with because I just can't deal with it at night anymore. Um, so we're going to take those videos. We're going to take those pictures of the erasing a hundred times to get it perfect and it didn't get perfect. And we're going to take those photos and upload them. So before we go to our meeting, um, and it might not be an IEP meeting, it might be a parent teacher conference. It just might be something as that, um, or it just might be a talk with your pediatrician even, but you're going to go ahead and take that link. You're going to go ahead and get that link of that information you want to share and send it to that person beforehand so they have time to look at it. And then you're going to go in, uh -huh, probably if you're like me, you're going to overthink it and check it every hour until you go to that meeting. But I suggest, you know, the night before, go in, check and see if, in fact, has anybody looked at it. And I don't mean it to call anybody out. That's not what it, that's for. That's there for um, we're making it easier so we can have accountability for everybody. So if nobody looked at it, you can put a note in it. You could resend it and it gives you an option to put a note in it. Or you can take that link and send an email. I, I noticed that you didn't have a chance to take, a, you know, to take a look at the file I sent you. Would you mind taking a look before we meet together tomorrow? Um, so give maybe a, a two days before your meeting, check to see if it's been looked at. Any questions yet? All right, I'm gonna bring up your website so you guys can see the link. And let me also get that, your PTA, USA.org, Florida PTA. So that website, there we go. And I gotta share my screen. So I work with Pam. Pam is your state ESE um, director for, and we did uh, Get Engaged Wednesdays we were doing over a course of a few months. We actually did a virtual binder one night. <laughs> so as, at, you know, with working with you guys so much, we said, we just need to give you your own platform, your own page. So in here you have um, F&D websites, resources to share, special health care, assistive technology, personal health. I mean, it goes on. And then there's also an update, I think, from August that hasn't been added yet um, because we're coming to our end of our year grant. So we are kind of, this is our last month for our grant year. We have a five-year grant, so it runs from October. So it'll probably be updated start October 1st. So every once in a while, take a look back and see if it's there. Is everybody able to access the chat area? Because I'm going to go ahead and put a link in. This is, this is a um, Google form. Ha ha. So you guys are going to see what a form looks like. And if you wouldn't mind taking a moment later on or tomorrow, whenever, um, take, a, take a moment and fill out the evaluation. I have to show that I took the time to do the workshop that we are funded to do. And the feds can check to see and follow up to make sure. <laughs> And once that's completed, I'll be happy to send you guys um, a copy of the landing page, 
the websites and everything. And then I want to share, uh, this is also a little added extra that I love to share because I'm all about printables. I love um, charts and um, organization because me and my boys, all, all of us have a form of ADHD at my home. So it's a struggle. If you share the same type of home, I encourage you to utilize if you have an Echo Dot or an Alexa, it went off. Um, I encourage you to use one of them because you can set reminders for appointments and homework and to eat because sometimes my son who's on ADHD meds forgets to eat when he comes home. So reminder, Mason, have your snack. Um, reminder, Misty, get up and walk because I work from home and I'm, I'm here all day, you know, so you can utilize all that. So these are going to be, um, these are all uh, one pagers bunch of different things that I've collected over the years. Um, fidget contracts, um, you have family questionnaire. So again, these are all basically from, from understood.org, but I'm more than happy to, I used to be able to give out keys. You remember the keys, Jess, that I used to give out to download? Um, anybody wants resources, that's what I wanna say. I don't wanna bombard everybody's email with all of them, but if you want them, let me know. I am happy to share. I'm hoping it opens up so I can give you an example of some of these things. Um, so this is actually, this is for what dreams. Okay. So this, you know what, honestly, this is for the teacher, but you can utilize this on questions for your child. What motivates you to do your best work? Questions to ask again, templates, but I wanted to share that, you know, uh, I, I love visuals and to make it easier for you guys, if you need anything, you let me know, I'll send them over to you. I could put them in a little, um, flash drive and mail it to you. I have no problem doing that. Any questions from anybody? Was it easy to follow the Google Drive or was it hard? No. All right. Um, the four, the, the four step pager, I'm going to go ahead and email you right now, Jess, and then I'm sure you have everybody's email. You can send that out to everybody yes, now. We can send it out to everybody. And i um, We'll also make sure that we have your contact info and I'll put the form in that as well. Perfect. Perfect. So will you um, email me the form? Will you email me the um the Google form? Just yeah. put it all in that email and that way I can just send it out to everybody, make yeah. sure everybody has it. Sounds great. Sounds great. And if any of you need any one-on-one -on -one or anything, just reach out for me, let me know. And I appreciate you taking the, the hour out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing this, Misty. Um, like I said earlier, this is being, was recorded. So we will share that not only with just with the people who came, but it'll also be posted on our Fugit Facebook page and we'll share it with County. And I'll actually share it with Pam. I'm getting ready to have a meeting with her in just a minute. <laughs> Tell She's on my membership committee for state. So, um, but that way we want to make sure that we're getting the information out. Um, to anybody who wants it exactly exactly and want. i think that's awesome um and that's something that i would love to talk to you guys a little bit more about how can we house this stuff to where i'll reach out for you yes we'll talk reach out. thank you everybody and you great you guys have a great night all right thank you everybody Bye. i'll send you all the information um later as well all right have a wonderful night